welcome to another episode of the Creative Coach Podcast. I'm Sarah, and I've got here my girl, Yasmin Raymond. Yes, welcome. She's recently married and has literally just been taking over the wedding scene by storm. (laughs) So I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell you guys everything she's up to because she's got her hands in a lot of stuff and is doing all of it really well, which is very rare. So I'm glad she's here. (laughs) Thank you. I'm blushing. Seriously. (laughs) Well, Sarah, it's lovely to be here. Um, Yeah, my name's Yasmin and I... Like you said, I kind of have my toes dipped in a couple of ponds in this wedding industry, but um, I don't know. I just am like letting myself kind of navigate this experience and then being really open to just kind of whatever comes my way. And I feel like when you're in the wedding industry and you're really people focused, a lot of these random doors start opening just because of the connections and um, like the opportunities that open of just like collaborations. And that's kind of how... I ended up forming my entire business. So um, for those of you who don't know, I am predominantly a wedding photographer and um, that started, oh gosh. So I did the photography pipeline of like, I got a camera in high school, did the senior portraits, figured out I was kind of artsy. So I thought about that. But then when I got to college, I was like, uh, the arts, I can't study art. Like, how am I going to pay my bills? Right. I can't be a starving artist. I've got really expensive taste and, uh, hankering for a TJ Maxx weekend every weekend. So when I went into college, I kind of like allowed myself to back burn all artistic endeavors but I would do it on the side and people would ask me to take couples picks and, you know, I would just get to do it sometimes make a couple of extra bucks. And then when we all had to go into quarantine, I had like a little midlife crisis, my poor 20 year old self. I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do with my life? My dream job was a consultant at the time, which obviously when we're talking about layoffs, like contracted work first to go. And I'm sitting here, like, I kind of gave up a lot of passion in what I wanted to do for a living for job security. But now I'm also seeing that um, there's not that much of it out there either. So why not take a step back and like utilize this time to see if, you know, there's something there. So I got back into photography. Um, I did a couple of creative projects during quarantine and then I just went out on a whim and there's a huge Facebook group um, called Charlotte Wedding Connection that a lot of brides and vendors use for networking. Um, And I just posted in there, like, does anybody need an intern? Like I'm young and hungry for some experience and I'm down to do whatever. And that's how it all started. So it started from a venue coordinating place. And then I would get to photograph for the venue. And I realized that I really love like the detail shots and, you know, like when it's quiet before the party has actually started and the venue is full of people. And, um, I decided to allow myself to pursue both of them. Like there wasn't really any reason why I couldn't do both. When I went full time by myself, I realized that I was actually insane. Um, and trying to do coordinating and photography was, I don't know who told me, um, that I could do it, but I would really like to have a conversation with them now and ask for honesty in return, because that was a lot. Um, my first fall season doing them both, I was so exhausted. So I made the decision just to focus on photography. And in that time, this content creation thing had submerged and I was already kind of offering it with photography just because I was getting the behind the scenes. I was doing a lot of second shooting. And so naturally I was already kind of doing that role, but I just didn't know that there was a title for it. And so when I took coordination off of my services, then it made room for me to explore, you know, the, is that right now is media. Um, We've recently just purchased a photo booth business. So now kind of capturing your experience from all different angles um, and just kind of seeing, like I said, these opportunities just kind of come and like present themselves to me. And I just get to say, do I want to put my energy here and see if there's something there or 
do I not? And that is really why um, I'm so grateful to have this career because I have that flexibility. So I'm just vibing. Yes, I love that. And I wanted I wanted to talk to you specifically about content creation because you are also a professional photographer. Um, so you you see both sides of the conversation and we're we're going to get into it a little bit about like there's been some tension about like content creators coming on the scene and like I get it and I don't get it at the same time right. so I think you're going to have a really like cool perspective on it um but yeah it's really cool about this so I'm excited to get into it with you good yeah well it's just it's been so cool seeing you be like a multi-passionate creative and like starting in the venue world. So like, I actually met you when you were modeling for, <laughs> you were mm -hmm. modeling in a styled shoot. And like, we were talking about this before we started recording, like it was the styled shoot from hell. It was absolutely terrible. It was terribly planned. Yeah, like it was not were hot. You did great. Yeah. But like the actual <laughs> styled <laughs> shoot itself was just like the hot mess <laughs> express. Yep. <laughs> and you know, for like- sure. Yeah. So anyway, that's a fun little yeah. caveat. We could do a whole podcast probably on that styled shoot, like what to do and what not to do. Whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I remember leaving that thinking like, is my next business endeavor? Cause here you're starting to learn this about me. I'm like, what, am I going to turn this hobby into a business? But I was like, should I start offering style shoots regularly and like planned appropriately? So people know that they can have a really nice communal experience at these things. But I decided my plate was full. So thankfully we did. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you haven't gotten there yet, but like, yeah. we I think you will. We you have an eye for like style. I think eventually you're going to be like, yes, I can knock like the style shoot game out of the park. Oh, thank you. I it's mean, I, you. <laughs> there's parts of me that want to preserve style shoots for creativity and not ever be I mean I know we all have to make money at the end of the day sorry I'm like trailing off on this but I know we all have to make money at the end of the day but to me my perspective is that the style projects are usually where we get to shoot what we're really passionate about because at the end of the day my client tells me the direction like they're the director I'm I'm there and my creative eye is going to guide this. But at the end of the day, they're what they're the people who give me what I'm shooting. And so not all the time we might have a lot of common ground, but they might not strike my vision that I wanted to, you know, shoot in this beautiful museum with this gorgeous dress. I mean, some of that is going to have to be stuff that is not organic and is paid for. And so I kind of want to reserve that for just being creative and allowing us to like play around and stuff and just not bring the money into it because at the end of the day, everybody's got to get paid. And I get that. But like, sometimes I feel like we, our jobs just get so mental. Like you just put so much mental capacity in it. I would love for those opportunities to just be like a fun way to like recharge and not really have to think about too much, but just like enjoy creating, you know? And so hopefully I don't ever monetize that. And I don't ever get into that business in that regard to keep the integrity of it, just like fun and creative. Cause we all know what happens as soon as you start adding money into the conversation. Yeah. Things get like messy real quick and it becomes business instead of fun and creative. Yeah. I completely <laughs> agree. Time and place for both, I think, but yeah, a style shoots is just like this whole like underground. It's like the underbelly of the wedding industry, and it, there's a lot there. Um, and I like them, and I hate them. I have a love hate relationship with them for lots of different reasons. But I mean, a good styled shoot, you can't beat it. A bad styled shoot, it makes me want to like quit <laughs> the whole thing. Exactly. Exactly. Like never do another one again. You're so pissed where that money just went, and all you can think about is like. Okay, never, never doing it again. Never doing it yeah. again. <laughs> never doing it again. Maybe I'll just hang up my camera all together. Like I'm done. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> life questioning, life altering experience after. Yes. Okay. Well, I love our caveats, but I'm going to bring us back to content creation. Um, yeah. So, first and foremost, I did a poll on my Instagram, or not a poll. I put like a question on my Instagram and the question button actually wasn't working. So people were just DMing me, which was great. So I <laughs> gotta love technology. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so um, one of the DMs I got was basically like, what is content creation? 
And the follow-up question to that was, what's the difference in content creation and just videography? Yeah. So, so I'll kick that to you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm I'm like already ready to go. Yeah. So I think the biggest difference um, is perspective and product and equipment. Like that is the biggest difference. When you are investing in a videographer, you are investing in, you know, a lot more technical knowledge. With a content creator, this virtually could be anybody, which is kind of, I know the area of problem in this in this um, service, but the perspective that a videographer is shooting with, it, it and I'm not a videographer, so this is just like, me kind of extending my experience onto video, but I feel like it's cinematic. The approach is much more, yes, still storytelling, but at the end of the day, you're retelling this story in a um, kind of a whimsical way. You know, the way that the clients are receiving this product, they're seeing themselves as like a little movie, you know? And with content creation, I think the POV of it is just a little bit different. Like the whole service stemmed from BTS footage, behind the scenes footage. So I don't think that the way that the creatives are shooting is necessarily the same. So perspective, I think is different. The equipment obviously is different. With videography, you are investing in a lot more sophisticated equipment than a content creator. Um, the phone is most common for content creation. Um, I know a lot of us now who have been in the content creation game for a little bit are starting to like up their gadgets, um, which is, you know, adding a level of sophistication to it, which is my MO as somebody who also does photo. Um, but for the most part, it's on mobile format. And um, yeah, and the end product of some content creators will deliver an edited project with the footage that was captured. Some just deliver raw footage. Some it's an add-on to have like a little montage. But again, that video, that end product is going to be a lot different than somebody in video who's editing in Premiere, not, you know, like CapCut or something. Because again, it is mobile. So I think there's a couple different layers that make it different. But overall, those are my three big main differences. Yeah. Well, and that leads me to another question I got. It was like, what, what are you actually getting? And the, this person had DM'd and said like, what's the use? Like, are you making reels? Are you putting like reels and saving them to someone's drafts on their phone? Is it just being, is it just going to their camera roll? Like yeah. what are they getting in the end? What final product? Yeah. So I think that this is something that varies a lot between creator as well. And again, their intention of the final product. So for me, um, and I can speak on, you know, like a, a stereotype of content creators only um, in, in the like really social media centered region of content creation. But for me, my end product is raw footage and the clients have an option to add on like a montage and the BTS footage ranges from like set up to genuine moments that your photographer and videographer might be, you know, I'm, I might be right behind them grabbing the same shot, but the mobile format is really the difference and how you're able to use it as a client now having that footage. So some clients might come to me being a little bit more social media focused, you might want like an Instagram takeover or something like that. And I think that that's where content creation gets customized, just like how wedding photo and wedding video packages get customized because it really depends on how the client is gonna wanna use it. And we're pretty flexible in that regard. So like, if you don't want me to do an Instagram takeover, but you want short clips to be able to use for your own personal content creation, then, you know, that kind of comes in those conversations pre-wedding day where you're just kind of like talking about shot lists and things like that, all the same as photo and video. It's just, again, you're able to now, this is a three second clip of you and your dress. Well, now you can use that on your story. You can send that out, whoever you can look at it in your memories, just like how Snapchat does like one year ago today, you know, and I think the way that we consume media right now is on that mo mobile format. And so I think because of that, these are a little bit more um, casual. So like you can go back and view them in a different way than like 
you know, your whole wedding video on YouTube or something like that. So I think it really just depends on, you know, what your client expectation is and like that conversation that you have with your content creator pre-booking. But for the most part, I think it's mostly raw footage. For my service, you get about like 50 clips minimum an hour. So I left a, um, I left an event, it was eight hours and I think it had almost like 900 behind the scenes clips. Um, so it really kind of just depends what's going on, hours of service and things like that. But um, if you're shooting on an iPhone, I put it in a shared album and then I back it up on Dropbox and then the client has access to it um, before I even leave because I'm able to just upload it right away and then they're able to have that on their phone so um if they add on that video montage i'll edit some clips together in about two weeks they get that video and it's all mobile delivered and stored that's very cool um and i got so the other the final like two questions i got from my instagram i think one plays into this is like what would be like do your clientele who is booking you, are you noticing that they're like influencers? Like, are they monetizing their wedding day in any way? Or is it just like the average person who just enjoys using social media? I would say for my clientele right now, people who um, are not like established influencers, but definitely consume media in that format, in that way. And they like that influencer lifestyle content. I definitely see that mainly, but also people who, um, don't necessarily have the budget for a full videographer, but then feel like this is sufficient and still gives them BTS perspective and at the end could still be like a video montage. So I would say definitely just regular schmegular girlies who are probably like in their um, 20s to 30s who just love Instagram, love to, you know, go on a coffee date and Instagram it. Those are the types of girls who really are taking to this service, I think. I love it. And then, so my last question from like my Instagram, and then we'll kind of get into just like talking more generally about everything is their question mark was, or their question was, how do you do audio question mark? So So, yeah. (laughs) tricky, Tricky with content creation. Again, for me, at least the way that I set up with my clients is exactly because of my wedding photographer background. I set it up the exact same way. Like I have a 60 day check-in with them. I have a 30 day check-in with them. I send them a questionnaire, just like the one for my photo clients, um, that goes over the exact same thing. And so if they come to me and they want, you know, a lot of ceremony footage, then we're going to talk about that because I can only get what an iPhone's capacity is. So I don't, and, and that's another difference, kind of how I mentioned with equipment between wedding videographers and content creators, we all know what the capacity of an iPhone is. And so the expectation of that footage is established that it's exactly what you would be able to get at like a concert, you know, like I'm going to be able to hear you, but it's not super crisp or anything like that. I can't hear the leaves blown in the wind. So, you know, don't expect that, but for you to be able to casually look back at your ceremony footage, you you're going to be able to hear the vows. Um, and some content creators might, you know, take to leveling up their services to add like lapel mics or things like that. Um, to me, my opinions on that are now you're borderline going into videography. And so at that point, what's the difference? Um, but we'll talk about that when, like you said, we talk about more general stuff. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, that was all like my little questions from the public. Um, so that's very cool. So yeah, I want to talk about, let's talk about like people having an attitude about it within the wedding industry. Yeah. Yeah, Let's talk about the drama. Let's, let's get into the tea. Um, so of course, like videographers and photographers and content creators, I do think in the last like two years, Like everybody used to be very separate. It was like photographers, you take photos, videographers, you do video. But really in the last two years, and especially since like reels have taken over and TikTok has become a huge medium, a lot of photographers have been doing video content. So a lot of videographers were like, well, if y'all are creeping into video, we're going to start taking photos at these events as well. And like use them in our portfolios and we need covers for Instagram. And then content creators come in and y'all are kind of doing both. 
but in a like more casual format. So everyone right now is just fighting. Like <laughs> exactly. Yes. Everyone's and- aggravated, which I think is silly. Cause like it's, it's a wedding. It's fine. But yeah. So let's talk about the drama. <laughs> At the end of the day, if the client wants their wedding covered from 50 different angles, like that's all we are there to do is to serve that purpose. And I think that what I have noticed is that it it does feel like too many cooks in the kitchen. Like it, it definitely can, but also all of the weddings that have ever felt like that, there's been no synergy or communion pre wedding day um, with the vendors. And I feel like if you're somebody who gets distracted by that, then you should take the a personal accountability to then like, I don't know, maybe have a conversation with the other vendors that you're going to be working with. We all are made aware of who the other vendors are at some point in the process. And in my process, at least for wedding photo or content creation, I like to get to know the media team because I want to familiarize myself with them. And I always send a message just to introduce myself and let them know that I'm available if they want to, you know, kind of collaborate. Because at the end of the day, we can only all be in the aisle for so long, you know, and that day of when we're all arriving is not really too much time for us to be able to have you know, like planning conversations. And I feel like, again, personal accountability a little bit. If you're somebody who gets distracted in an environment that is a little bit like that, being able to take control of that would be, you know, just to familiarize yourself with the team. And I think that a lot of people will see a content creator and have an attitude, but will love to repost the footage that the content creator sends to them. So it's like, are we going to help each other or what? Yeah. Yeah. And that, and I think this whole, like, you're creeping into my territory stuff on a wedding day is so annoying and it's always been annoying. And like, there's always been a hierarchy of like the photographer is arguably the most important person on the wedding day. Like everybody wants their photos. Everybody values them very highly. Like the photographer needs to get what they need to get period. That's how I feel. And then like right below them, I would say is the video team. Like we're a little bit more in the background. We have a little bit more ability to like stay out and zoom in onto things like with the way that we use our equipment and like shooting over the photographer's shoulder. But then like as content creators have come into the scene, everybody is like, no, like you're on the bottom. You're just here with an iPhone. Like you're not important. Not considering like this couple has paid for you to be here. They want this content. It's just as important to them as everything else is. Like, just and it's not, get it's along. Not to decide that, you know, like mm-hmm. it, at the end of the day, I know that people complain about how our, our generation is painfully online, but we are. And like, even as vendors, I have to rely on social media. Like I know that Instagram can be mentally draining, but then I just take a step back from the computer for a little bit because I need Instagram. I can't have a negative relationship with it because my business relies on it to succeed. So for me, I saw this as my industry is adapting and I have to adapt with it. And if I was already taking these BTS videos I know that this is valuable because when I sent it out to other vendors that I worked with, it was received well. The clients love this BTS footage. I mean, the only reason why we do unplugged ceremonies is because the photographers, like, you know, other than that, they love to see those little pictures. They're yeah. asking for them the day, the day after the wedding because they want that instant gratification. They want to relive it. So if the client decides to pay hundreds of dollars for this content creator it's not up to any of us to decide whose shot is more important it's up to us to decide how can we work with what this client has provided with this director who this director has hired so that we can give the best product and like i said content creators a lot of the time are sharing their content with vendors they're getting valuable content Mm -hmm. for the other vendors involved so yeah might be another cook in the kitchen but network with them and make friends with them because you need a reel i'm sorry you do like we we have to post on instagram so i I see it as like what's the harm you know if Mm -hmm. however coming from the perspective of a professional photographer if the content creator is a professional, that is like the biggest, biggest red line that I think all of us are on the same page about. 
you, because this service can be done on a phone that we all have access to, seemingly anyone can do it. And if you are not used to weddings, then you sometimes can be a liability to the photo and video team who have a really important job to do. So I agree in that front. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I think, uh, you know, people can talk about like, oh, it's just more people competing in the space, but like whatever capitalism, babe, like that's how it works. Yep, like sorry. get over it. You need to adapt and like welcome new vendors into the wedding industry. Right. Cause like the only reason they're there is because brides want it. Like exactly. if brides didn't want it, you wouldn't be there. So like everyone just kind of needs to get over it. Like you're, they're I not agree. really, you're not competing with photographers. You're not really competing with videographers. It's all such different services, but um, yeah. yeah sorry. Okay. Caveat there. No, <laughs> yeah. I completely. I think it all kind of goes into the same thing because like you said, a lot of us are kind of, um, I think we're mad because our services are starting to bleed and now we're kind of feeling like there's no separation. And I think that that's why there's a lot of tension, mm -hmm. but there's, there is a lot of like, we, we all blend to do the same job because we all kind of have to use the same platforms in order to market. And I think that that's why our jobs are in a sense overlapping. I don't think it's like out of spite or out of like competition necessarily, but we all use the same tools, you know? So we all have the same objective when we're, when we're on a job. And so, yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's just one of those things. And it's all kind of new. Like ev the whole landscape of marketing has really changed in the last like two or three years. So everyone is just kind of like, okay, what do we do now? But yeah, no, I think you're totally right. Going back to your last point, that's like, if someone shows up to a wedding day who doesn't understand weddings, doesn't understand the pace of a wedding, doesn't understand everyone's role on a wedding day, they can really yeah. mess it up. Like they can screw up the entire day. And yeah, so it's important to be hiring professional content creators who like have experience because yeah. like if they just show up and start shooting and getting in front of everybody, they've now messed up your photos that you've paid thousands of dollars for. They've now messed up your video that you paid thousands of dollars for. And like it can spiral yeah. really quickly. <laughs> I agree. And like the synergy is something that a bride and groom can pick up on. And when it gets awkward behind the scenes, the couples can totally sense that, especially the bride, poor bride, um, or like the, the, the female partner who is taking on a lot of the mental responsibility of a wedding and she they're just trying to get ready. Right. And yeah. all of the vendors are, you know, checking in with them, wanting to get content of them the, you know, masculine partners, you guys give us only so much content on a wedding day. And I know that y'all don't really like the cameras in your face anyway, you know, so let's be real. Like we're all here to get the most details of our female partner and having that like tension behind the scenes, just because, you know, you don't really understand how to work together as a media team that can really like distract them from their wedding experience too. And I think cannot stress it enough we all like all vendors always do just do your research while you're hiring these vendors. And I mean, even um, what started this conversation about the podcast was that I shared my thoughts uh, from a um, the vendor table and that content creator had said something that I somewhat agreed with, somewhat disagreed with. But at the end of the day, it just proved that each vendor is not the same, even if we serve similar product or if we, you know, um, give similar services because, your client experience is going to be different with all of us. And I think that that's like the biggest, biggest takeaway, you know, professional, not professional, somebody who is a little bit more documentary or social media focused, either way, just get to know them, have conversations about your expectations before booking. Yeah. Yeah. I think the wedding industry is like so customizable and particularly content creation is so customizable that like, this isn't a service you can just book willy nilly. Like you, you really do need to be talking to somebody and like, this is what I want. Does that match your approach and things like that? hundred percent. Yeah. Because that, that creator had said, you know, first and foremost, I'm shooting for social media and, you know, that might be why you hire content creator because this service was born for that. Like that was, there was a need in the industry when digital creators started to get married, who also wanted to document their wedding, just like they would any other event in their lives, because this is how 
they make a living, you know? And so wedding is no different, arguably most important. You know, your audience at this point is invested in your planning. So they want to see it come to fruition as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm not shooting for social media. If if we all get to use this for Instagram, that's awesome. But at the end of the day, this is still somebody's wedding. This is still a very important day. But hey, if your intention of this service is that you want a lot of reels, you want a lot of transitions, you want a lot of TikToks, I have to shoot with that in mind. And so super, super important just to, you know, connect with your vendors and talk about those expectations. Yeah, definitely. hundred percent. Well, we've got like five minutes left. So is there anything else you wanted to cover about content creation or just something you think people should know? Okay. Yes. My little spiel (laughs) content creation is something that I think a lot of us are going to see more and more and more of, but right now it's the new kid on the block and we all know how we respond to trends. You know, this is a trend it's resurfacing. It might die down. It might not. At the end of the day, every couple has a different vision for how they want their event memorialized and to be able to relive again and again, again, just how there's so many different styles of photographers. There's going to be different styles of capturing the wedding in general. And at the end of the day, if this makes the couple happy, it's not up to any of us to like force that we just have to make the best of it. And I think that, um, these services, we have an opportunity where we can really like piggyback off of each other and help each other out. So just try to be more open-minded when you get on to a job. Like we're all here just to capture somebody's really happy day. I mean, there should not be any bad vibes just because damn, somebody's going to get a video of you taking a a photo of the bride and groom because that's what they wanted. So Try not to take life too seriously. And if people want a little Instagrammable wedding, then let them have it, whatever. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Like everybody just like be cool. Just chill out. It's it's just a wedding. (laughs) That's how I feel. Yes. And I love your perspective also coming from like the professional photography side of things. Cause you understand like, you know, yeah, you get it. Like. I still want to create genuine art, you know, like I don't ever want this, you know, content to be diminished as just social media content. I mean, I, I live in my Snapchat memories from high school. That's how I like experience nostalgia. So that's how I want my wedding memorialized. I'm 24. I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, I'm the one that's going to relive it. So if that's how I want it, that's how I want it. I'm the bride. I don't care. hundred percent. Well, I mean, I even remember going through and like when I was getting married forever ago, cause I'm old. Um, it no, was like, ever yeah, I'm, um, I'm 30 this year and it hurts, but it's fine. My back what? hurts, but oh. <laughs> it like Instagram, when I was getting married, Instagram was like, kind of new ish. Um, and like you, you made a wedding hashtag and everyone would just post a picture with that hashtag. So sometimes I just go and look at our hashtag and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I remember, I remember that. Like, you know, and it's fun. So yeah. Yeah. And it's casual and it's just, it's a completely different take on like documenting a wedding day and people want it, which is why you're here and why you're getting paid to do it. So like, yeah. I do. I think listeners need to chill out. It's not like, this is a completely new service. It's not in competition with professional photography or videography. It's like, it's, it's completely own thing. And like, if your couple wants it, you need to welcome that vendor and like bring them into the fold, talk to them about like where people want to be expectations. The same way that like photographers and videographers meet like before important events, like, okay, I'm going to stand here. If you want to stand there exactly. or like, you want me to be wide? What lens are you on? Like, blah, blah, blah. Right. Same it's, communication. it's just communication. It's yeah, just exactly. communication. It's not that hard. Exactly. <laughs> so everyone just needs to chill out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not that serious. Yes. That's how I feel too. Well, we are running out of time. So I wanted to thank you again for coming on and sharing all about it. I appreciate it. Um, Yes. Tell everybody where can they find you on Instagram? 
All right, guys. So we already talked about I'm a jack of many trades. So Yasmin Jade Collective is going to be our main Instagram. That's where you'll see me doing some wedding photography and content creation. Um, and you can also catch us at our new photo booth business, Honey Photo Booth Co. Love it. And that's Yasmin, Y-A-Z-M-I-N. Yes. Jade Collective. Yes. yes. Yasmin. All right. Well, thank you. And I'm sure I'll have you back on at some point to talk about many other things, but for now, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> yeah.